Hey, hi all. Welcome back to BRR Knowledge Center. In this session, we'll talk about how to pass a parameters from one procedure or one task to another task in low-cost performance testing tool. So we have seen a couple of sessions on this uh, low-cost. Like, you know, this is a open source low testing tool, which basically using it for uh, low testing framework um, to test any website or API for load and uh, spike and stress on the web test. So any kind of testing, if you wanted to do that, you can use Locust. This is an open source and simple, easy and descriptable uh, you know, uh, Python program where you can simply install it using a, you know, a pip package where pip install and Locust where it is going to install you the lo latest version of um, uh, Locust. And then what only thing is you need to uh, uh, write some Python program like, you know, uh, importing some uh, kind of uh, uh, classes from the locust package and then start writing of your test cases like defining of class with test cases and then inside of class you need to define the tasks with the iterate task decorator where the locust is recognizing and identifying way to start and how to start because that is a mandatory and core uh, 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 functionality of locust that we are going to uh, or we need to define at the rate task decorator on each definition. Okay, so as I mentioned, this was written in the Python code and uh, just swam your system with millions of simulations or uh, users where it is going to hit your website. So this is Python based testing tool used for load testing and user behavior simulation. So this is a kind of a practice for testing uh, your website and software application with the primary purpose of, you know, uh, stressing the application's capabilities. Okay, let me share my screen uh, quickly so that um, you will have some idea. And if you want more details on this locust, I think please watch my previous videos on how to install and how to you know work on with simple program of running and hitting API and website with the uh, virtual users and runtime uh, configurations. Okay, so I'm just opening my uh, Visual Studio Coder where I'm going to create this program. Which basically, uh, no, I'm going. I'm going to use this as an editor uh, going forward for all kind of uh, programs here. Mm, of course, you can use Notepad or PyCharm or you know kind of uh, Python editor itself. But I'm very much uh, comfortable with this. So there is no uh, there is no you know kind of a compulsory using of uh, Visual Studio Code. Or you can use any editor and uh, start writing of a program. So as I mentioned, I think first of all we need to check whether you have a locust uh, installed into your system, I think. So this is uh, fine. I can just say a locust hyphen V, sorry. Uh, I think hyphen hyphen version so that it will tell you the version number. That means it's already um, a pip install list where you can list out all the install packages and pip list, I think it's simple pip, pip, pip list. So that it will tell you like whether the locust is being installed or not. If you can look at here, um, I have a couple of uh, packages being already installed into my system. So here, this is the locust already installed it. This is fine now. I think uh, now I'll uh, uh, start writing up my program here. So as I mentioned, I need to import a couple of uh, objects from locust package, right? And first thing is HTTP user. And then uh, second thing is task where I'm going to define my task. And then uh, kind of um, at think time, I mean, I'm going to mention it using between or constant uh, object. And of course, the last one is sequential task. Once it is done, you are going to, you know, uh, start writing of a class load test uh, scripts, right? And pass the HTTP user as the leverage starting object to send request to the website. So here you need to uh, main, specify a couple of uh, configurations. One is um, wait time, which basically using it for uh, uh, capturing of your stats uh, between each request. It's nothing but think time in other tools. And other thing is you need to mention the host, which host or which web server uh, you are or you are going to hit it. In my case, I think uh, I have um, um, uh, API where it is going to fetch my locations. Let me show you that. So I think um, this is where my locations AB is running out with different endpoints. And then uh, I'm going to look at here. This is my API running now. I have uh, two locations, three locations basically. And this is my um, endpoint hitting 
5190 localhost is the website host and the location is the endpoint. So now I'm going to hit to this particular web API, web API using uh, Locust. So this is what I'm going to specify here. You know, 5190 is my uh, port number. This is the host. So to, so far, I think this is fine, uh, you know, having it. Now I'm going to define my tasks, right? So first task is, right? I'm going to declare or define my ranking also. Uh, saying let's get locations by just passing the self object. And here, right, with self dot client dot get and here locations, right? I think with that uh, as response, I'm just uh, uh, checking that response uh, dot status code, right? Equal to equal to 200, then print uh, uh, successfully, uh, uh, you know, um, fetched the locations. So locations, you can uh, specify it here with just a response to a text. If it is not fetching, right, it definitely returns some different uh, status code other than, um, you know, uh, 200, then uh, locations API, uh, location, locations fetching get failure, failure, right the simple task i've been defined and then again another task i'm going to define with rank 2 defining uh, saying you know, display locations right so again i'm passing self here here i want to pass my location i mean uh, values in this method not in this method okay uh, what is that uh, resp dot text print i think comma should be here but not here okay so locations um uh, retrieved locations and then from here i need to uh, showcase that so this is the task one and i think you can say a print task one right and this is the task two i've been defined right now see how it is working first I'm just running this from my command line. So let me just, okay. I just uh, say locust, this is the syntax hyphen, uh, locust parameter pass, user count is one, and the uh, time, uh, span time is something, you know, five seconds. When I hit this, it is going to uh, ask you to browse uh, the UI of Locust, which is in Flask uh, uh, UI interactions. So it started on 8089. You go to here uh, and you just browse the uh, Locust UI, right? 8089, then it will uh, pull all the details you have mentioned in your script, one, one, and this is what the host you have mentioned. Just hitting on start farming, it is going to attack your web API. And if you look at here, uh, I think uh, task one successfully fetched the locations. These are the locations it is being fetched here. And when you stop this, I think you can see like uh, what location it has been fetched. 3387, 3389, and 33. I think uh, three uh, locations we have to see here, right? 3389. So all these three locations are fetched here, right? And you can see several requests have been print, um, sent to web server. Uh, no values, no exceptions, and charts you can see here, here for no data. And uh, from here, it started. And here, you can see like uh, no values and uh, request per second one, one user count. And this is the response time you can see here. A number of users, of course, one user always it is sending uh, with the mentioned time duration. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to explain here is now I just wanted to pass the values from one procedure to another procedure. This is what our main agenda of today's topic. Uh, because um, uh, sometimes I may depend on uh, task one values, response values, and then I'm going to start executing my task two um, kind of stuff, right? So now what I'm going to try is, so I'll not define this stuff here. So I'm just uh, uh, sending this response code and response uh, text to uh, this function. So how I'm going to send it? For that, what you need to do is, we need to define here um, 
just initial function with the init by just passing self and parent, right? And with that, super dot hyphen hyphen init of self, right? Here you define status code is zero self uh, response text is empty. So with that, you can access these variables uh, in any uh, task under this class. It's because I may define multiple tasks here, right? So what was that here problem? Okay. So here, what I'm trying to do is in the task one, I'm going to assign status code, right? Equal to resp dot status underscore code. And again, self dot uh, response text, right? Response text equal to uh, response dot text. Now in this function, I'll not be you know passing through anything. I can directly use it here. So here under this, I'm just checking self dot status code equal to equal 200. And also self dot uh, status code not equal to zero. Then I'm going to print uh, successfully, uh, you know, of fetch locations. Uh, here are the locations that is self dot response dot text. If it is not getting 200 status quo, then I'm going to say locations fetching request gets failed. Getting failure. Okay, so let me remove that so that we have some. So far, this is done. Now, I have been declared two global variables instead of my class in the default constructor, I can say, initialization, and then assigning values here in the one task, and then using those values uh, through that global variables in this task. Too. Now, I'm again going to my command front and then start running this. This time, I'll not use any UI. I think I can say headless. When I pass this, I have even headless, it will start running this, okay? What happened? It has no attribute events. Wow. What I missed. I think this has to be parent. Sorry. So let me clear this and now run this. It started hitting task one, task one, task one, task one. And then the task two, I think it fetches all the um, values because task one is executed first. It will wait for uh, uh, the time till uh, it hits to server and get back to uh, uh, client. And then it hit to task two. And then in the task two, I'm just validating. So response code, hence it is 200, then successfully fetch locations. And these are the locations coming out here. And you can reduce this to whatever count you wanted it. So if I say minus T um, uh, three seconds, then it will fetch and come out of my processing, right? So it will fetch three times, one, two, three times, right? You can see here a number of uh, requests for uh, locations in point hit to, I mean, went to a web server three times and aggregation total three. And this is the average response time and minimum, maximum and medium failure requests. So no, so, so far zero and uh, request per second was 1.16 milliseconds. So this is how it is working now. That means, uh, uh, sending my uh, parameter values from one procedure to another procedure. Similar way you can uh, uh, declare any any variables, any number of variables in, inside of class, and you can use it in a different task. Tomorrow I may define, define another task here of uh, th three, right? And you can define uh, uh, post uh, locations, right? And I wanted to do something here based on the response code or status code. So you use those variables directly in the task three and you can use it. Okay, so I hope you understand uh, like how to pass values from one 
you know, uh, task to another task, why are the um, global variables defining in the initialized or default constructor of this particular init procedure? Okay, so thanks for listening to this video and uh, please subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you.